And second, um, so is the clicker working? Yes, awesome. Uh, could I get actually a microphone? One, two, good. Okay, so I just uh, reintroduced Cloudflare very quickly. Um, this presentation is going to be like 15 minutes. Uh, it's a bit shorter than I expected, but hopefully I, you know understand what RPKI is and what we did uh, for the deployment. So Cloudflare, we are a CDN. We serve a lot of traffic, 10% of the web requests. Um, we receive a lot of attacks. Uh, we, are, we have 150 point of presence in the world. We are present on more than 186 exchange. And I recently counted, we get, we have tens of thousands of peers all over the world. Um, so, who am I? Uh, so I'm Louis, I'm a network and data software engineer at Cloudflare. Uh, I used to be in London, I moved to SF. And I'm, I take care of like all the data, uh, of all the network data at Cloudflare. So uh, those two tools, uh, we use them for uh, just gathering data, just doing statistics, seeing uh, BGP routes, trying to understand our network and do traffic engineering. So, R RPKI. Um, so, RPKI is like two RFCs. The first one, uh, 6.4 IT, is like defining a way of cryptographically signing uh, the route plus length, the origin ASN of a route. And RFC 6.8.10 is uh, communication method of like the validated prefixes to a device. So usually your router who's gonna accept or reject routes. So how API works is you have a IIR certificate um, who, which you trust, um, which is gonna generate. So every, so LACNIC is, has one, uh, I, RIPE, IRIN, AFRINIC, E, and APNIC have those route certificate. So for every organization, so for instance, your company, uh, when they ask for IP and ISN, you get, they're going to create an organization certificate. And with this one, you're going to be able to generate routes, generate airways, uh, saying that this prefix is actually mine and should be announced with this ASN. So you can say any ASN, basically. <clears throat> you, you put even A0 to say this is not even allowed to be routed on the internet. And the way this cryptography works is like you're gonna check this route against the organization certificate and you're gonna check the cert if the certificate is actually uh, correctly generated and trusted by the rear. So, um, how validation work? So this is the other part of RPKI. You got all the RPKI which see them as directory, directory of certificates and arrays. So it's just like files. Uh, so the validator is gonna fetch all the RPKIs, and he's gonna cr do cryptographically uh, computation, cryptographic computation, to generate a prefix list. Uh, once you've got this prefix list, uh, you know the prefix is like prefix uh, max length uh, ASN, and you know they they are valid. Uh, it's gonna send it to a RTR uh, server. The RTR server is gonna communicate over the RTR protocol to a router. So in summary, um, how it goes in, in the nature, um, you send a packet to 10.0.0.1.1 and your router is gonna decide, oh, where should I send it? So in the first, in the first case, uh, you get two more specifics which have been hijacked. So the router is going to say, hey, I've got more specific. Let's send it to the hijacking party. But if the um, router has RPKI database, it's going to say, you sh this prefix should not be announced as a more specific. So the router is just going to drop the routes. So when you send the packet, it's going to actually go to the correct destination. So this is how RPKI works um, in like, as simple as I could explain it. So the mm, use case, is just like filter out bad announcement, hijacks, misconfigurations. And you have, uh, some use case can include like bring your own IP services where you want to make sure your clients are actually not making you hijack to the prefixes. So bring your own IP, you check against uh, RPKI because you trust the RIAs to manage the IP allocation. 
uh, a quick overview of the how a uh, hijack happened. So uh, there was the Bitcoin that uh, the uh, my Ether wallet that affected Cloudflare. So we published a blog post, and uh, because our resolver was actually uh, had actually our routers actually accepted the the bad route in Chicago. Um, so we had traces, like we saw it in our monitoring devices, like, oh, damn, we, we accepted the route. Um, but how did, what, what happened exactly? So this is the regular scenario. Uh, we ask a DNS resolver for data. And once we get the reply, well, the user is gonna query the website, my Ether wallet. But somebody uh, decided to actually uh, hijack the DNS. So 1.1.1 on the routers that accepted the false, false route directed their queries to the wrong, uh, to the hijacking server. Which means when the user actually re received the reply, it was a spoofed reply, it was a fake reply, which were given by us or Google or anyone who accepted the leak any resolver that accepted the leak. And then when they tried to contact the website, they had a certificate error uh, because it was not a fa false website. So there are a few things. Uh, you can leak to make your resource unavailable. So you just, okay, I'm just gonna target, like reroute the traffic and not route it, so just dropping it. But you can try to impersonate. And when you try to impersonate, you have to make sure that uh, your protocols, the upper protocols, because BGP by default doesn't have any security, you trust any route, uh, the, it's the upper protocols that needs to do the authentication. So it can be SSL, TLS, DNSSEC, uh, and then you check, you check against uh, those. So like this certificate was the proof that uh, it was actually a false website, uh, but people still clicked on it. Uh, the problem is with DNS, uh, since it's UDP, it's easier to spoof, and there's no, uh, unless you're using DNSSEC, there's no way you, um, uh, there's no way you can uh, make sure the act it's actually coming from the person you want to. So, uh, in, in this case, like if you implement DNSSEC or HTTPS, well, in the case of somebody trying to hijack, you just, lose uh, availability, but at least integrity and confidentiality will still be kept. Um, so just, um, we have few types of hijacks. Uh, for instance, you make an announcement and, yes, uh, you try a more specific, for instance, the number three. So no matter the S path, uh, yes, so, RPKI is usually more for the third case where a more specific is gonna be always accepted. RPK is gonna say, no, don't, don't accept this more specific. In the other case, uh, you've got this S path, the, a trace in the S path. Um, if you spoof it with your own ASN, it may get filtered by RPKI, but you are at the same metric level. So if you're not using RPK, you may accept the route. So in, the, in this case, in Chicago, that route became the best. In the second case, um, you got the, you spoof the origin ASN. So your route's gonna have a lower preference because of a longer OS path. But at the same time, you, you will, uh, RPKI will not, like validation is not gonna be seen. But it's protected more or less due to um, a less, uh, lower preference of the route. So if you're still well connected to the internet, you will probably use the correct route. Anyway, RPK is mostly like reducing the risks. And uh, so yeah, there are other uh, techniques just to avoid route leaks, IR filtering, uh, announcing max length. So the, the second one, we're trying not to advise it too much, but um, it's trying to have the max length of slash 24 in IPv4, slash 48 in IPv6 for critical resources like DNS. Um, it's not very really advised because if everybody was announcing slash 24, well, we'd have a huge uh, routing table, which is very slow to compute. Anyway, so the core of this presentation is how we implemented RPKI at scale. So what does this mean? 
is we have IPs and res resources in all the five regions, like NIC, AFRINIC, APNIC, ARIN, and RIPE. And what we want to do is uh, automate prefix signing and, in and invalidation, and also long-term maintenance, like what, what happens when the certificate expires. We want to do a strict validation at scale. Like suddenly we decide, oh, let's roll out every validation on all our routers. And we want to monitor, like, what happens? Like, was this route supposed to be filtered? Like, was it not? What time? So that's, that's what at scale means for us. Um, so we have to know choice of mode. We have to choose between hosted or delegated. Hosted, you trust the rear to do the ROA generation. You say, I want to create an ROA for this route. Uh, in delegated, the rear is going to say, you know, my PKI, Cloudflare has this PKI at this address, and they manage their own ROAs. They, they can generate the ones, and you check in the certificate which one they're allowed to use, but we can generate some. Uh, so I just did a quick uh, overview of all the rails, like if they supported both, because right now we're using hosted, but for better automation, delegated better. Um, so right now, only um, APNIC, ARIN, and AFRINIC uh, are doing both. But LACNIC is based on the RIPE, uh, on the RIPE software. It's only supporting hosted. Um, the RIPE did the small test with delegated, but it's really on demand, very small, so. Hosted, so we chose hosted because we do not change that, many, that much time IP address and we do not sub-allocate. So there's no need for changing all the time, so we can afford to do one query every once in a while to the rear. Um, and not every rear offers delegated, um, you know. And well, in any case, if the rear is compromised, it's like any CA was compromised. So we're not saving on like um, changing the point of failure. But what we want is APIs. We want APIs. We want to get, put, update, delete all the routes. And the problem is um, we don't have much ways of automation with that. So um, APNIC apparently has draft. Uh, Arin is insertion only. I could not even list. Uh, not update, not delete. Uh, LACNIC, uh, well, that's uh, RIPE. Uh, but RIPE is more or less easier to batch uh, because you click, you click on the box. It's not, it's faster to do. It's not so much automatable. But anyway, in talking about availability, all the reels are very uh, are in specific geographic position based on the operation of the rear, which means sometimes, depending on where you are, you may may take some time to just load the rear database. From I just ran some like RIPE Atlas test, took 500 probes test. How far are you from this RPKI? Well, results depending on which rear we're talking about the result can be very low. Um, so every time, since you need to fetch all the f five rears plus few others, well, it's a, you're still gonna fetch, depending on where you are in the world, you're still gonna fetch four out of five at a distance of, uh, at a latency of more 80 milliseconds, which means it can be very slow to synchronize. Uh, for instance, the RIPE, which is the biggest, uh, took five minutes from Sydney. Uh, so at 2.4 megabits per second, uh, are in nine megabits, 14. Anyway, uh, which means right now only 10% of the routes are signed. And if everything was signed, we can imagine it would be a gigabyte. And if you have to fetch a gigabyte around the world, at a, it would take 30 minutes to an hour to update all the routes, which is not very fast. Um, plus somebody could actually fill random records. So, we have 150 pops. How are we gonna do validation on every single one of them? RTR for central point to each router. So, this is a single point of failure. What happens if suddenly we break the connection? What happens if we have latency or packet loss? No encryption, because the vendors, the, the specification says you can implement over TCP, you can implement TCP plus SSL, you can implement TCP plus AO and TCP plus SSH. Uh, vendors chose to only implement TCP. 
So there was a huge problem because if somebody intercepts and the longer the link is, the more likely it could be, uh, you could inject false route. Like, hey, instead of uh, invalidating this route, what happens if I invalidate all the routes you have? So uh, th that was the, mo uh, the bad solution. So how about a validator software on every pop? Well, it's kind of wasted resource, and you're doing the only the, you still have like the, the latency for AirSync, yeah, like, and it's harder to monitor. So maybe not a validator on everything. Like you only need to validate once, and then you create a prefix list. So we actually we realized we wanted a prefix list to deploy everywhere, just a valid prefix list that we know we distributed securely. So our solution is having a local cache in each pop using our CDN, using HTTPS, so no more, no more insecure transmission of the route. Um, central validation having authority on all of that, so it's easier to uh, have one point in validation, monitor this one point, and distribute a list of prefixes. Uh, easier to integrate with SALT and our pipelines for automation, and we built a custom RTR software to communicate with routers. This is GoRTR. And we fetch all the validators and we generate a list, we create it, and we put it on our CDN. So 150 pops now have a very fast way of accessing um, RPKI validated data from us. Uh, we, in this case, like if you want to use that, we're very happy to do that, to provide it for you. Um, it, the same way we provide a DNS, like, on the purpose of like, you can trust us. Um, if you want to do validation by yourself, you can do it. We just provide an easier way to have like a full validated list of prefix from Cloudflare. So you can find the list for rpki.cloudflare.com slash rpki.json. And the RTR cache is uh, on GitHub, so you can download it. So github.com slash cloudflare slash GoRTR. So GoRTR, uh, try to build it to be compatible with as many uh, devices. It supports SSL, supports uh, regular TCP, uh, communicates with RTR lib, uh, able to fetch HTTP lists from uh, RIPE validator, can fetch from us, can fetch from uh, other validators. So we try to make it very compatible, but the, the only version that Cloudflare adds is um, some check that we actually ensure that Cloudflare generated the li this list. So you can actually check, like a very small cryptographic check. You can do that. So also what we want to provide is a RTR as a service. So you just configure a router to our device. Uh, if you actually don't want to install Go RTR and if you want to use us, we probably say if you want to run tests mostly, just like, oh, is, am I actually filtering? Um, but yeah, it's a very all-in-one solution. We are, if you peer with us, you're one hop away, so harder to hijack. So even if it's insecure, it's, it's an insecure way of communication, you can still find us fast. And monitoring, so quickly on the at scale monitoring, how we say that this prefix was actually validated, like, and did we drop this? We have monitoring of RPKI, so we have a certificate transparency. We upload every certificate of the RPKI, and, you know, we, that allows us to have a trace, have a trace if the, the, the rears get actually hacked and suddenly start generating false certificates. So it's called Cloudflare Cirrus, city.cloudflare.com. That's an amazing job from our crypto team. Uh, monitoring of validation. Uh, so we know how many routes we signed. Uh, we know how many invalids that raised. Uh, and we know how many filtered routes. So on a router, we ask the router, how many routes did you invalidate? How many and which one? And online, you can, I mean, we also look at other services, like how many people are doing API validation. Uh, yes. and. We have a project that's on the pipeline, so just announcing it. Um, ideally, we want to test if a network's actually implementing RPKI. We want to have a slash 24 prefix, which is invalid, or slash 48, and the unclosing, which is valid. And the slash 24 is gonna be announced in as many places as possible. 
while the slash 23 is gonna be announced at one single place. So if you're doing API validation, you're gonna reject the shortest prefix. So it's gonna go on the slash 23, which is gonna be in a different place. And this is how we could determine that if, how many networks uh, are doing validation. Um, do you have any questions? Perguntas? Uma só, porque temos, temos pouco tempo. Olá. Olá. Eu sou o Douglas, Brasil Perim Fórum. É, no ambiente, lá, lá no Brasil nós temos um ambiente de X. Ah. Lá, yes. lá no Brasil nós temos um ambiente de X onde nós temos bastante bastante participantes que são pequenos provedores não tem condição de pequenos provedores esse não tem condição é meio subjetivo mas eles não têm condição de, de manter sua própria estrutura de RTR server você acredita que é, uma uma estrutura compartilhada baseada nesse projeto que vocês desenvolveram poderia ser utilizado para atender a validação de RPKI para todos os participantes de um de um X? So, what do you mean by shared architecture? Uh, um, um ponto central de um servidor central de validação de RPKI ou até distribuído com múltiplos nós com esse com essa esse modelo de validação em cache que vocês utilizam. It's, we try to provide this um, for people, for something simple to use. So this is, the, I think, the, the perfect use case uh, that you don't want to run a validator, you don't want to run your own DNS resolver, like let's use 1.1.1. .1 .1. Um, <coughs> this is what we want to provide. Um, feel free to use it or not to use it. We publish the list of prefixes. Uh, you know which ones are gonna be filtered. Um, and if you want to create a, si a similar pipeline, please feel free to do so. The more, the more uh, information we have, the best. Um, I try to build the software to make it as easy as possible to use it and as compatible as possible. But yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias.